Hello everyone, I hope you had a nice week. So today, we're going to talk about loop. Loop exercise, algorithm, and we're going to do an activity with MakeKit. Okay, so let's get started. So to start off, let's talk about this question. What are the steps we follow when we breathe? Now, every time we breathe, if we don't really think about it, but I want you to actually think and breathe. Okay, now, Using the block code I gave in here, breathe in, breathe out. I gave out the answers, I guess. Use the block code so that it mimics what you're doing every day. Pause the video and come back once you're done. All right, welcome back. So most likely you would have some, said something like this. First you breathe in and you breathe out. I mean, you could have said breathe out first, doesn't really matter, right? But the point is, after you breathe in, you breathe out. And after you breathe out, what do we do? We breathe in. And after that, we breathe out. And after that, we breathe in. And after that, we breathe out. And this process is what? It's continued or repeated forever, right? Until either you stop breathing for some reason or you die, right? So what do we call this? I mean, is it? practical for us to write out code that repeats so many times. No, it's not. In programming, the least thing you want to do is repeating yourself, okay? It's something called dry. Don't repeat yourself, okay? So whenever there's something repetition, we use something called a loop, okay? Yeah. So there are different kinds of loops, but we're going to be talking about some uh, common ones, okay? Now, believe it or not, we've been using loops before in uh, making traffic light and street light because we used repeat, right? So that's some sort of a type of loops, okay? And we'll be talking about that today. All right, different types of loops. Well, there are three major ones. One is counting loop. Second one is conditional loop. And third one is infinite loop. I think the names are very self-explanatory, but just to uh, explain a little bit about each one, counting loop, it's, it simply means like repeat an action. Well, even though I said an action, it could be a sequence of actions, meaning it could be a, a group of actions, okay? So repeat an action a certain number of times. So if you wanna say, tell your computer, hey, do certain things a certain number of times. So that means what? You have to know how many times you wanna repeat. For example, I want you to repeat, I want the computer to breathe three times. Then you repeat that, uh, breathe in, breathe out, how many times? Three times, right? So we've been using counting loop, okay? So whenever we say repeat 10 times, then the computer repeats how many times? 10 times, okay? So that's counting loop. A conditional loop, hopefully you can figure it out by the name. It repeats a sequence of actions or an action until a condition is met. For example, you can say, hey, breathe until <laughs> you die, right? Or breathe until you cough or something like that. That's conditional, okay? Or you can say, hey, count up to certain, um, maybe not. Uh, no, let's not, let's not go that there. Let's not get there, okay? Uh, or you can do this. Uh, clean the room until your mom is satisfied, right? So that will be con conditional loop, okay? You're repeating something until certain condition is met. A third one is infinite loop. Um, it's repeating an action or a sequence of actions forever, okay? Now, infinite loop is very dangerous in programming because why? Once the computer goes into the infinite loop, it can never come out unless an external action you know, disturbs it or interferes it, okay? So infinite loop is something that you do not, you have to be careful of, okay? Moving on, uh, let's think about this. We have a llama here, what is it doing? Yeah, obviously it's eating, right? Llama is eating. Eating what? I don't know, we don't care, right? All right, what does the llama do before swallowing its food? Well, it has to chew, right? It needs to chew its food. We have to chew our food too, because why? It's very important in our health, okay? Now, question number three. How would one write a code that describe what llama is doing right now? Hmm. Well, it's very easy, right? Chew. But does it chew one time? No. It chews again. Does it stop? No. Well, for this GIF file, it's repeating forever, right? So basically it's repeating, 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 right? It's repeating 
But in real life, practically speaking, does it true forever? Even though this GIF file that you see, it's true for because it's, it's infinite loop, right? But in reality, does it true forever? No, the question is, it's not. Because why? Eventually, it has to swallow the food, right? Otherwise, the llama will die, right? So you don't want that to happen. So the question is, how can we control that? How can we, uh, what can we do to control how many times it chews? Well, there are different ways to do it, okay? And I'm gonna show you two different ways, okay? Because like I, I talk about three different types of loops, but today I'm gonna talk about the first and uh, first two, which are counting and conditional, and we'll be, we'll be doing that, okay? So how would you write a code that uses counting loop? Well, let's say, I mean, in order to do this, remember, it's repetition of an action or sequence of actions for a certain number of times. Meaning, if you want to use counting loop method, you have to know exactly how many times you want the llama to chew, right? Well, for example, if I want to say 20 times, well, you don't have to repeat chew 20 times. You don't have to copy this 20 times and paste it 20 times. But what you can do is you can simply write a code or uh, wrap this. A function. This is an action, right? This is this is an action, and you wrap this in cert, uh, some sort of repetition or loop. Do you see this arrow? That means it's looping. Okay. So one time, choose, goes back, choose, goes back, and continue, continue, continue. But after twenty times is done, right? It does not go back because why? Twenty is done, right? Now it goes to the next step, and next step should be swallow. You have to swallow the food, right? Now that is counting loop. Of course, this is not practical for this case because why? We can't really tell llama to chew only 20 times, right? So what do humans do? Humans usually don't really count. I mean, maybe your parents would tell you like, you have to count, you have to chew 10, 100 times, but it's not practical. So what we do is usually this conditional loop, okay? So you chew until what? Until, <laughs> until you wanna swallow your food, right? So usually the recommendation is when the texture loses its, uh, well, when the food loses its texture, okay? So when you're chewing, you know that the food is no longer same texture as before. That means, hey, it's ready to, uh, ready to be consumed, okay? So what it does is this, the llama chews its food and the texture is still there, chews, and still there, then chew, and the texture is still there, chews again. And the food is now, there's no longer texture. So it goes back and asks, hey, is there texture in the food? The answer is no. Then it will bypass chew and goes to the next step, which is swallow, swallow its food. Okay, so that means what? In conditional loop, this inside will be only, uh, only run, but only if the condition is met, okay? If the condition is not met, it will escape. Got it? Hopefully that makes sense. If not, pause the video and think about it, okay? Uh, I'm gonna give you exercise, two exercises. Number one, this is the, uh, this is the first one. Write out a code, a code block or block code using a loop to draw 10 cards. Now pause the video and think about what sort of loop you might be able to use in order to make this happen. Welcome back, hopefully you thought about this. So basically we have like one action or you, you could argue there are two actions. You have to choose card and you draw card, card, right? But for now, what we want to say is, hey, one action is drawing a card, okay? So in this case, draw a card that contains picking and actually drawing, okay? Now, but you could, you could have made this into two steps, right? But anyway, that's not important. The point, important, th important thing is there are two ways to do this. Without using loop, you have to copy paste this 10 times, right? or nine times additional to the one. Um, but if you were to use loop, you might want to use something called counting loop, meaning you want to repeat this 10 times. So you repeat this 10 times and you are done and you will have 10 cards at the end, okay? Very simple, right? Now exercise two, very similar. Write out a code or write out a block code using a loop that draws, draws cards until you draw an ace of heart. Okay, think about this and come back once you're done. All right, welcome back. So in order to do this, um, the action is still draw a card that uh, involves choosing a random one and picking out, okay? Uh, of course, you want to repeat this how many times? We don't know. We, do, we have no certain number that we, how many times you have to uh, pick this, 
So we have to use conditional because why? There's a condition. It says until. This is the keyword. Okay. So this is, is something like this. Okay. You draw a card unless card is not or unless card is a is a part. So let's think about this. You draw a card, then it turns out it's it's uh, it's not an ace of heart, okay? So that means what? It's not, that means it's true, right? So you draw another card, okay? And you do this, repeat this, repeat this, repeat this, and then you draw a card and it turns out it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an ace of heart. Now you go back and ask yourself, hey, is card not ace of heart? But it is. So that means what? The condition is not met anymore. So that means once you draw a heart of ace or ace of heart, then this condition is no longer met, meaning you escape from this loop, okay? Now, loops are very useful, but it's very dangerous in a way. You have to know either how many times you want to exactly execute certain actions, or you have to know exactly what condition you want to escape, okay? In this case, if the card is ace of heart, then you escape. Okay, if you don't have your phone or tablet, please bring them. And once you're ready, today let's go to coding game and algorithm travel. So last time we've done a few of these stages and I'm hoping that y'all did your homework and hopefully you got around uh, 17, 18, because today we'll be starting with 18. Today's lesson was about loop and starting from round 18, this deals with looping in a way. So let's go to number 18. We're already here, of course. So this introduces a new feature, a new functionality called function. And from now on, function space is also available, yes. And this uh, stage, it gives you the answer. So let's follow along. So forward, forward, forward. Uh, catch the coin and turn around and that's the function and then on, in the main section we'll just use the function the function function All right so what this does is this each function within the function right it does the following it goes forward 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 and gets the coin and turns around in clockwise right and this is a block we call this a function but in the main, what does it say? It says, hey, do the block of function, how many times? Three times. So let's do it. Go forward, 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 captures the coin, turns around, and then repeats the function. This is the second function. Repeat, and this is the third one. Forward, 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 captures, and turn around. And as you can see at the end, the third turning around is not necessary, but in order to get there, this was needed, okay? So even though this is not entirely looping because it's a function, but it's in a way like a looping because um, what we want is we want to repeat this block of codes by a certain number of times. So it's a looping. Next. Let's take a look at this and try to see a pattern. Now, what can we do repeatedly so that the scroll can get to the coin? All right, let's go to the function. The function gives you four blood and it gives you some hint. But if you look at this, this is zigzag, which is very patterned, right? So in order to get to the next or go through the zigzag, first, the scroll has to go forward and turn around in counterclockwise, and then go and turn around or turn uh, clockwise, right? So let's say this is our function, and let's try it out. Like, let's try it one time, okay, and see what happens. Go forward, counterclockwise, go forward, clockwise, right? And imagine, and not imagine, but think about this. Isn't that where the squirrel was? In a way, like same orientation. Look at this. I'm gonna go back. Exactly same, right? So that means every time we run the function, it goes forward, turn, and then rotates. And we can repeat this how many times? One, two, three, four, five. 
and then capture the coin. That's exactly what we're going to do, okay? What happened here? Uh, all right, so let's do it again. All right, and we're going to repeat. One, two, oops. One, two, three, four, five. And see, first one. Second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. Now you see that the last turn was not needed, but still we needed to get up to here. And what we need at the end is this, the end, we just have to capture it, right? And let's repeat. There's a bug in here. It's okay. We know what we did and at the end, it captures after turning around. Perfect. So as you can see, the reason why we use this function is to reduce um, repetition. So imagine we had to write all this. I think this four steps, five times, that's 20, 20 plus one is 21. So if we were to do this without this looping or function, we, had to, we needed 21 blocks. And that's not what we want. In coding, what we want is we want to reduce the number of repetition or number, number of uh, unnecessary steps. So once we know that we just want to repeat the same thing over and over again, that's the perfect spot to use number one, a function, which stores a block of code. And number two, looping, which loops through the same block of codes within function the number of for specific number of times that was the perfect example let's move on uh, pause for a minute and try to look for a pattern now this looks complicated but believe it or not this is a very simple solution and this is part of training your uh, problem solving skills right even though this is a simple one as you solve many problems more complicated later on it will improve the way you see and approach any problems, okay? So if you look at this, right? What we need is, the, the goal is clear, the goal is to capture the coins, right? So how, don't think about this too, but think about the first one. What does it have to do? The squirrel has to jump, 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 and capture, right? So let's try that out. Jump, 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 and capture. And then let's run this. Jump, 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 capture. Hey, don't we have to just repeat that? Jump, 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 capture. Jump, 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 capture, right? So why not repeat this three times, right? Why not? Jump, jump, capture. Jump, jump, capture. Jump, 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 capture. Okay, what's the problem here? In order for this to happen, right, the squirrel has to be looking at the right direction. So in the beginning, it's looking at the right direction, right? But afterwards, it's not, because why? The coin is now at this, not in the front. So you have to, uh, at the end of the uh, jumping, not only capture it, but after capturing it, maybe turn around uh, counterclockwise. Let's see what happens. Jump, jump, capture, turn around, jump, jump, jump. Capture, turn around, jump, 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 capture, turn around. At the end, the turning around is not necessary, but remember to get to the last point, it was needed. Uh, as you can see, depending on, uh, even if you know the pattern, right? You have to know what situations you're allowed to use the loop. Loop is used when you know for sure that the initial state, a given condition is valid. So in the previous state, stage we couldn't repeat without rotation because otherwise they wouldn't be in the same condition as before because initially the scroll was looking at the right direction but after the first loop it wasn't so always keep in mind whether you, the condition is met to use uh, looping but as for your homework i want you to go through all not all of the very fun but try to do as much as possible that deals with looping and using function okay now, if you face a problem it's also good to try to solve 
the problems on your own, but feel free to post your questions on Google Classroom and we'll do our best to answer you as soon as possible, okay? I really hope you go through this because um, we went over looping today and I really want you to use looping skills using these games, okay? Have fun, thank you everyone, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.